Hey guys, and welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. Today's video, I'm going to be going over the basics of the Apply Damage node. So previously, I've done a video on my own Apply Damage node, where we've created our own function and macros for taking and applying damage, and you can still use that. However, Unreal does have its own function for applying and taking damage. So I'm going to be going over one of those nodes today of Apply Any Damage. So if I hit play, I get in here. You'll see in the top left corner of my screen, we'll have a print string saying the amount of health we have. So if I just go in front of this gun here, you'll see that when it hits me, we're going to take damage. And so that red thing coming on screen is from a previous tutorial as well. So if you want to watch that, it's a damage indicator, and then I'll link that in the description down below. Again, you can see when we get hit by projectile, up in the top left, our health is going down by 20 each time, as that's what I've set it as. I did also set it up as a random number first, however I decided for the purpose of the tutorial, it's easier to do a whole number, but I will show you random as well. And of course, you can change the number to be any value that you like. So our health is going to go down. I don't have a death part in this at the moment. All I simply have is showing you how to use the apply or any damage node so you can deal damage or receive damage. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to show you this gun blueprint, which I have here. Well, I say gun, this turret thing, which is just shooting projectiles at me. So I'll just show you what I've done for that. So that's the wrong one, sorry. This one here, all I've done is I've just got two cubes and an arrow in here. And then what I've done is it's just going to spawn in our projectile BP, which again I'll make in a second as well. Or I'll show you how I made it in a second, sorry. And it's going to spawn it in and then apply a set physics linear velocity onto it with a value of 3500 and then loop that every second. So we get in, you can see it's just shooting a bullet out forwards every second, like so. Very basic mechanic which I've got in here just to show you how this all works. So let me close that now. And what I'll do is I'll show you how I've made my projectile BP as well. So I've already got this one set up because I imagine you have as well. You're just here for the damage part. In case you don't, I'll show you what I've done. All I've done is I've got a sphere collision and a sphere static mesh as well. And I've also added a projectile movement component in here too. The sphere collision, we want to make sure we have simulate physics ticked. And also we want to generate hit events with the collision presets as block all. And the sphere one, I've just done the same as well on the static mesh. That's not too necessary, but I did that anyway. So now you're going to want to open up that projectile BP or your sword BP or your gun, whatever you have which you want to damage the enemy or the AI or the player, open that. So again, I want this projectile BP to the thing causing damage. So I'm going to open that up and go to the event graph. But again, this could be anywhere you want. So it could even be in a character if you want punching or any melee like that or a knife again, anything which causes damage. I'm going to be using the event hit. So I'm going to right click and get event hit like so. I imagine you probably use the same thing as well. So when you hit something, that's when you want to cause damage. Out of other, I'm going to cast to my character, which is the third person character, as that's what I want to apply damage to. Now you don't have to do that if you don't want, so you can just leave it as event hit, because if you want it to be more general. So I'll do that as well actually, I'll leave it as more general, so it's not just specifically the character. So out of event hit, I'm going to apply damage, and I'm just gonna get apply damage like so, the damaged actor, that is going to go into other of the event hit. So whatever this bullet hits is going to apply damage to that actor. So that's a much better way of doing it, sorry. The cast means it's just specifically looking for that character. But remember, you might have multiple characters. So event hit, apply damage. Other from the event hit is a damaged actor. As again, we want this actor here, which we hit, to be the one which we are damaging. The base damage, I'm going to set as 20. But again, you can set that as whatever you want. So you can have it as 10, 20, 15, 5, anything like that. And for a random value, you can just come out of the damage there and get a random float in range. The minimum as let's say 10, maximum is 20. 20, sorry, not 10. So that will then give a random float between 10 and 20 for the base damage. I'm going to leave it as 20 though. The event instigator is going to be who is essentially firing the gun. So if this is a bullet, it'll be who's firing the gun. So that would be a player controller. So you'd want to get player controller. However, for me, it's not going to be a player which is shooting it, so I'm going to leave it as blank. The damage causer is this projectile BP here. So this is the actor which is actually causing the damage. As you can see there, actor that actually caused the damage, word for word there. So for this, I'm just going to get the reference to self, as it is this bullet which is causing damage. And damage type class, you can put this damage type there. However, I'm just going to leave it as blank. And that's all we need to do. It's very, very simple. We can compile and save, and that's the basic part of apply damage done. So now whenever this bullet hits something, it's going to apply damage to that actor. However, now we also need to set up a part in that actor to receive the damage. So this is applying damage, now we need to take damage. So I'm going to do that in my character blueprint, so I'm going to minimize this. 
go to third person VP blueprints third person character and in here what I'm going to do is just find some empty space right click and get event any damage so again I'm using the any damage one as it's the most basic version which you'd want to use also actually in projectile BP one thing sorry I want to get a destroy actor out of this so when the bullet collides with me the bullet is going to get deleted like so compile and save go back to our character blueprint now in here you can see we have the damage damage type instigated by and damage causer so you have the amount of damage they were actually causing to the player the type of damage the player which caused the damage and the blueprint which caused the damage as well so again you can mess about with these to get them perfect for you so if you want it so people on the same team can't damage you you can come out damage causer and maybe get has tag so actor has tag and then see if the tag is friendly or is team one or team two and then you'd hold down b left click to get a branch like so so let's say i put this as friendly so if that actor has friendly true we're going to do nothing false we're going to deal damage because if the player which shot us is friendly then we don't want to actually take damage from them so that can be in damage causer or in instigated by it depends how you set it up because you might have damage causer as a character blueprint again depends how you set it up but that's how you do that part so then friendly players can't attack each other so then what i'm going to do instead i'm just going to decrease the player's health so I'm going to get my health variable, which I already have, which again, I assume you do. I'm going to set health. If you don't have one, you can just hit the plus variable down here, naming it health and making sure it is a float value. I'm going to set that off of event any damage. And then out of the damage here, I'm going to get a float minus a float without going any bottom value. And the top value we want to have as health. So we're going to get health, putting that in the top value there. I'm going to re note that to make it look a bit neater. And then the return value of this, I'm actually going to go into a clamp float just so it doesn't go below zero with a minimum at zero maximum i'll have is 100 which is my max health return value goes into the set health there so now when we take damage we're actually going to take damage as well so the health is going to be decreased by the amount of damage we've done obviously not going below zero and then setting that to our new health and then what i'm going to do just to show this is i'm going to come out this and get a print string with the in string being our health there and again you've probably already got this as a widget on the screen so if I compile, save, we should see this working. So if I walk in front of this, what I'm going to do is you see the health went from 100 down to 80. If I go in again, 80 to 60, 60 to 40, 40 to 20, and then 20 to 0, perfectly like so. So that works perfectly like that. Actually, I will do an example with the friendly fire as well, just to show you it working. So what I'm going to do is just come out of this, done B, left click to get a branch, and the instigated by, I'm actually going to come out of this and get has tag, so actor has tag, return value in there and the tag is just going to be team one so if it's on team one and then true like i said it's going to do nothing false is going to go into the set health there so we note that so now if they're on the same team so if they're both on team one it's not going to do any damage so let's set up the teams as well so if i select the third person character self i'm going to search for tags add a tag naming this one team one making sure i spell it absolutely correctly and compile that and so for the other tag, so we have the characters on team one, I'm also going to put the projectile on team one. So I'm not doing the turret because obviously the instigator needs to be a player controller. So actually the damage causer should go and target, sorry, not instigated by. And the damage causer is obviously self in our projectile here. So if we open that up, it's self. So the damage causer is this projectile here. So I'm going to select projectile BP self, add a tag. And obviously this one is going to be team one as well naming it exactly correctly as well so again now the character and this projectile are on the same team so that would obviously mean that you'd want two different projectiles for each team so one team would have a team one projectile another team would have team two projectile i believe there is a way to do it through instigators as well so you can have just one projectile however this way is a little bit easier more simple for you guys so i think this is a good way to get started to get into it so like i say this projectile and the character are now on the same team as they both have the tag of team one so now this shouldn't take any damage. So if I come off with true, get a print string, and I'll put this as friendly fire. Let's see if that prints off. So we hit play, we go into it. It's now gonna print off friendly fire instead of taking damage. So our health is no longer going down as this is friendly fire. If I change the character to be on team two, so I just change the tag to be team two, this should no longer be friendly fire and it should take damage from us. However, you can see it is friendly fire because I have made one mistake. All I'm doing is just seeing if this is on team one. I want to see if we're both on team one. Now the player's on team two. So what I want to do is just change this a little bit again. 
to move that out. So for the tag, instead of it being team one, what I'm going to do is actually right click and get tags, this array down here under actor, and I'm going to get a copy, leave an index as zero, and the return value going to the tag there. The index is zero because if you search for the tags again, my team two tag is under the index of zero. So what this is doing now is it's going to check our tag to see which team we are on and checking to see if the bullet or whatever is damaging us has that same tag. So does the bullet have the tag we do? If it does, we're on the same team. If it doesn't, we're on different teams. So if I were to change this tag back to team one for the moment just to test it out, hit play, this should still say friendly fire and it does. So now it says friendly fire when we get shot. If I change this to team two, hit play, what should happen is it should say our health is going down. So again, we're no longer on the same team. I'm on team two, they're on team one, so our health is going down. And again, if I were to change this back to team one, so we're both on team one, now it should say friendly fire and our health isn't going down anymore. And again, just to prove it, the health only goes down when this string prints because it's going through there. So that works perfectly for us. So I think that'll be it for this video. If we've done everything we want to do, we've set up the very basic system of event any damage off and apply damage here. And we've also set up a system for friendly fire as well, which I wasn't expected to do, but there we go. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.